Welcome. My name is Alistair Christie, and this guide is going to be the first in a series of guides on using Borland Developer Studio. The topics are going to be varied and random, and probably will not follow on from each other in the slightest, which basically means they'll be on whatever topic I feel like ranting about when I come to do one. In this training movie, I will illustrate how to create application icons. First we will have a bit of theory, then we will use GIMP for creating an icon that can then be used with your application via the project options. A Windows icon file does not necessarily contain a single icon, but instead can contain a series of them in different resolutions and bit depths. The bit depth is just the number of bits each pixel represents. 8 bits per pixel allows for 256 colors, and 24 bits allows for 16.8 million. Windows will pick the icon that works best in the circumstance that it needs it. Typically, Windows XP uses icons in three resolutions, 16x16, 32x32, and 48x48. With Windows XP, support for 32-bit icons has been added. A 24-bit image with an 8-bit alpha channel. The alpha channel determines how transparent a given pixel is. If you are only going to support Windows XP in high color, or better, then 32-bit icons are all you need. However, you should provide icons in other bit depths if you want backward compatibility. 8-bit icons are supported by Windows 95 to 2000, so you should probably supply these also. These 8-bit icons support 256 colors, one of which you use to specify the alpha color to allow for transparency. However, because the 32-bit icons have a dedicated alpha channel, they tend to look much smoother. There are also 4 and 1-bit icons, which are 16 color and monochrome respectively. Windows Vista supports 256x256 and 128x128 icons, but I'm not currently running Vista, so we won't discuss them here. The 16x16 icon is used in the task tray, taskbar, and in the icon in the top left corner of the application window. The 32x32 and 48x48 icons are used as folder, desktop, and start menu icons. If the correct icon is not available, Windows will use the closest match and scale it to suit which may result in something looking less than attractive. So if you want your icons looking good in all circumstances, you need to provide an appropriate icon for it. GIMP is the GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's a freely distributed piece of software for such tasks as photo retouching, image composition, and image authoring. It works on many operating systems in many languages, and we are going to use it to create some icons. So enough theory, let's create an icon. I have here an image that I took while on holiday. It's a Ulysses butterfly. And no, I was not tramping through the jungles of South America when I took it. It was in fact in a display case. Using GIMP, I have edited around it uh, using the eraser tool to remove the background and uh, cropped it to make it exactly square, as all icons are. First, we're going to create a new image. And I'm gonna make it 100 by 100. Okay, and we're going to start making our icons. Each icon is going to be a separate layer in this new image. So I'm going to scale this, and make it 46 by 46, and then I am going to add a drop shadow. Okay, let's zoom in on that, and we'll want to crop out uh, it so that it's only 48 by 48. Okay, there we go. Now I want to merge all the layers. Okay, copy that. And paste it as a layer. Okay, I'm going to scale this one again. to 
make our next icon and go control C, control V. Now you can call these layers whatever you want. I'm just calling the the um, by the number of pixels and the bit depth. So just move these around so we can see them all as we work. Yeah, I'm just going to go undo a few times. Make this one 16 by 16. So the smaller one I'm having with um, no drop shadow, so that'll make it a little bit clearer because it's a, a pretty tiny icon. Okay, and I'm going to convert this to 256 colors and copy and paste that. Do a couple of times again. Okay, make this one indexed. So that's now 256 colors as well. Okay, let's make this a bit bigger. and zoom in a bit and if you have a look these are our 256 color icons and these are our 32-bit um, icons and you'll notice that the edges are a lot clearer and these are quite jagged um, it's just because we've got transparency on this one now there's one more thing I have to do and that's I need to get rid of the background Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll save this. Okay. Okay, first of all, I'm going to overwrite my previous attempt um, with GIMP's native format. And then I'm going to save it as an icon. Okay, and now we've got the little wizard, and we've got our 8-bit, um, so these two are 8-bit ones, and the others are um, true color. So it's just 256 colors. And go OK. Okay, and now we're ready to um, load it into our application. Let's load up uh, Ball and Developer Studio. And in the project menu, under options, in application, we can change our icon. And there we have it. This wasn't exactly a step-by-step how-to guide, however, I hope you'll come away from it with enough knowledge to get you started on your own high-quality icons for your applications. Creating icons in this way is a bit fiddly, but it's certainly worth the effort to have your own icon. If you find playing with GIMP not your cup of tea, you can take advantage of one of the many commercially available icon tools. A quick Google search will turn up dozens for you, none of which I've tried, so I won't comment on them. All I can really say is, get stuck in, have a play, and have fun.